Thank you all for uh, being here last session of the day. And um, yeah, um, so um, here's a sentence I never uh, thought I'd say. Uh, I am Petya and I'm here uh, today to talk to you about the WordPress REST API. <laughs> um, yeah, so why I never thought I'd say that? Well, um, it's because the only people I've ever heard talk about the REST API are developers. And uh, I've never in my life been only one thing, but you know I've always been more than one thing, like a project manager and an event manager and an organizer and community lead and things like that. But developer has never been one of the things I've been. Uh, so why would I talk about the REST API? <laughs> uh, well, because at some point I decided that I have to understand it. And then uh, I decided that maybe I have to share it. Uh, I'm a part of this amazing uh, WordPress agency called Human Made, and uh, Human Made does WordPress enterprise work and a lot of work with the REST API. And um, a lot of my uh, big part of my job is to uh, talk to clients about what Human Human Made does. So understanding the REST API was one of the things. Um, we also organize these events around the REST API because we have a lot of internal knowledge uh, about it. They're called a day of rest, and you're not going to hear any uh, rest puns today during this talk, I, pr I promise, no. Um, yeah, but um, this is, these, these are conferences that I'm involved in organizing, and you know, it only made sense to understand uh, what the technology around them uh, is. And then, um, you know, I'm going to tell you a little bit about my, um, of my backstory, just because it's kind of relevant to uh, why I'm talking to you today as well. Um, I was pulled into the web development world from uh, publishing and marketing and PR. I'm one of those people. Um, and um, I worked for a traditional publisher in Bulgaria. I uh, got there from the marketing department. And I worked with the development de department for almost five years, working with a team of developers building digital platforms for traditional media. And uh, my project management job <laughs> consisted of telling developers what to do without any idea of how they do it. <coughs> Zero idea of how they do it. Uh, in fact, when I joined that web development team, I didn't even know what a CMS was. Uh, you know, programming languages, uh, front end, and uh, all that jazz. Uh, not even going to mention that. Um, yeah, so for years, my involvement was just telling people what to do without knowing how they do it. Uh, and then all of a sudden, in 2011, that changed because, because along in my life came WordPress. <laughs> and all of a sudden, um, I could be everything for myself, you know? I could build a website on my own. I could uh, tweak menus and you know, make front-end changes. I learned a little bit of HTML and CSS and felt like a, like, like a god, you know? <laughs> WordPress made me feel like anything was possible. I did not need developers anymore. That was so amazing. <laughs> everything was possible, right? And WordPress makes a lot of people feel like that. Like, uh, you know, 27% of the web. Uh, it's growing. It's growing at an amazing, at an amazing rate. And how, how did it even get here from a blogging platform in 2003 when it started? <laughs> you know, uh, it's like it was just for people to like share their uh, stories and then custom post types. It was all, you know, all of a sudden a CMS and then an admin redesign and like a big media kind of library thing and publishers started liking it and it became like a publishing platform and then the business ecosystem grew and people started like building larger and larger projects and it started being slow and people started being plugins to make it faster and then SEO optimization and all that huge ecosystem around it and then in 2000 you know at some point people started talking about it being an application framework until today when all types of projects are built with WordPress from cooking blogs to like uh, media websites that have like thousands and uh, thousands of impressions per day. And the question is, what's next? Where to from here? And how, how is it going to grow from here? And uh, can we have, can there be a software that can power both my grandma's cooking blog and you know the super intense cub 
complex website of the sun with like hundreds of thousands of posts and a sophisticated, flexible editorial management system on the background. So in this talk, um, I'll try to look into how the REST API is kind of the next thing that will allow WordPress to outgrow the current state. And, uh, you know, as the REST API is considered uh, and actually getting merged into core, uh, we'll see how this technology will impact the project and how it can impact all of our uh, businesses. And why on earth would no, like, people not stop talking about this REST API thing? So um, <clears throat> I think uh, the, reason, the reason why people would not stop talking about it is exactly this, because it is the next thing for WordPress, the next big thing for WordPress. It's the next phase, and it will allow WordPress to be considered as a key element of even larger, uh, more complex stack. And uh, that will happen by providing it providing a clear path uh, to the WordPress content for different, other different technologies. And this is important. Because if you think about it, <laughs> if we look at WordPress, let's try and imagine WordPress as a, like a living, breathing creature, you know, like this one, for example. You know, and we have to, if, you, if we think about it, we have to admit like it has kind of a lot of responsibilities, right? It's, you know, it's very friendly, so it has like th these millions of friends, and uh, it needs to pay attention to everyone all the time, and it needs to be, but it needs to be modern and hype, and tries tries to fit in with like all the other cool kids. It needs to be really badass though, and all powerful and strong and sophisticated, and also very easygoing and friendly to everyone that would like to just drop by and say hi and then go. And you know, if it hosted a party, it had to take care of everything. And it would have a very, very hard time delegating. It would, you know, have to prepare all the food and like all different styles of food for like international guests as well, right? And uh, also deliver it very, very fast. And otherwise, you know, the crowd would get like uh, mad and go eat somewhere else. Or it will uh, all of a sudden, you know, it had to do like maintenance and the back end and uh, just uh, technical support and uh, to clean up after everyone as well. And security, it's important. We don't want like bad actors at the party. And then it also has to look gorgeous, right? It has to be very presentable and modern in front of its guests. And like it has to speak a hundred languages and, you know, be everyone's personal guide to the party and even though these days it's kind of it has a PhD for some people there is still the expectation that it, it has to behave like it did when it was in kindergarten right right so if it was a living breeding creature it would be on the verge of a little breakdown as an event organizer, I can tell you, I would. <laughs> and, uh, you know, everyone would if uh, people expected it, to, expected them to kind of uh, take care of everything and do everything so, so perfectly. It would be on the urge of breakdown. So, can we say that WordPress is maybe starting to burn out a little? Maybe. Nikki, if you think about it, this moment is the moment not too far away from, uh, you know, it's not too far away from a very knowledgeable, very experienced, gifted person, like, let's not say control freak, let's say person. <laughs> um, you know, at, at this moment when they start to realize that maybe they'd have to offload some of it, maybe somebody else can do some of the jobs better, right? There are probably people out there that will be better at this one thing I'm trying to fit within everything else. So the REST API is for WordPress, that thing that will teach it to let go of certain things that maybe someone somehow can do better. The REST API will teach WordPress to delegate. And uh, it will help WordPress focus on what it does best, provide a brilliant, amazing space for authors and editors to create content. And uh, the REST API will help WordPress to finally stop worrying about the front end and let the cool kids that developers love to play with take care 
of the front end. And uh, it can focus back on what it does best. This is a nonviolent thing. <laughs> We're not like beheading Wapu or anything else. Don't worry about it. It's, it's safe. <laughs> the headless CMS is a concept wherein uh, the WordPress, front, like the front end to the back end, are the couple. The theming system is something separate from the admin that you know and love. And um, the, the kind of one of the strongest things about WordPress, it's its back end. Uh, it's easy to grab comprehensive, full-featured publishing backend that is also extendable and customizable through plugins. And authors really love it. Authors really love publishing with WordPress. They like the visual editor, you know, and like all types of tiny things that have been created for them, distraction-free mode, everything that makes, you know, small significant, significant gems that make, uh, that streamline content creation. WordPress is great for that. So the REST API will allow companies to develop products using WordPress just for its backend, separating it from the theming system, which nowadays powers the design, the front end. And uh, it will allow developers to start using WordPress as a headless CMS. This is the main difference. You know, in a traditional CMS, uh, data collection, deliver, display, you see it on the, on the chart. Uh, a headless CMS removes the theming system and instead allows you to use any technology on the front end. It's really, really neat if you think about it. So it creates a lot of opportunities because developers are no longer limited by the technology on the front end of WordPress to create what their clients need. And uh, the content can be used for multiple purposes. You can, for example, power multiple, uh, multiple front ends. You can use, uh, using the API, developers can actually power from one CMS, from one backend. You can power a mobile app, an Apple Watch app, um, a desktop application, or like uh, just a desktop version of a website, or just something entirely different. Separating the backend from the frontend helps create better products and allows new technologies to take care of the front end. Authors and editors can keep the back end that they love, the interface they love on the back end, and uh, developers can use WordPress as a part of a bigger technology stack. This is just, uh, this is just one example of uh, a system where WordPress is used as just one part of a bigger uh, system. And uh, it's displays like a print CMS being used as the core source and uh, data being driven from there to the WordPress install where the content is being translated and sent to multiple front ends like mobile apps and different, uh, different other types. Okay, you wanna see some examples? There are, even though it hasn't been merged into core, people have been using it in production for a long time. So, Let's see an example where uh, using the REST API, uh, a project was built with an alternative to the front end. This is the website of uh, us two who developed my favorite uh, iOS game, Monument Valley. You guys heard of Monument Valley? Yeah, it's amazing. So us two wanted to use WordPress for the back end because they really loved it. They loved uh, how they could count that it will be developed uh, um, over the years and they wanted to build their own front end and do like all these interesting stuff. So how like the colors just uh, go from one color to another. Uh, so they did, they wanted a website with front, with press backend and a front end built with React. Um, and that's, uh, that's their uh, install basically. They have a single page app with React front end and like uh, a Node.js um, which yeah, uh, enables uh, server side rendering. And then if we look at another example, with um, like replacing the backend. This is uh, Wired, which you probably all, uh, all know. So Wired also uses the REST API for their live blogs. Wired served uh, a billion page views in 2015. So it's pretty impressive. They, uh, they have this uh, really, <laughs> really interesting install. So I'm gonna read all of this because I get terribly confused when I talk about it. Land developer, hello. Um, so what they do is uh, um, their live blog uses data delivered uh, 
from WordPress with React.js frontend, and text and images are posted via a third-party mobile platform saved to WordPress post meta, and then made available using a custom WordPress REST API endpoint. And then React.js displays a subset of live blogs with a dynamic scrollable area, and allowing visitors to easily and quickly read through uh, the content and sit back. It kind of updates automatically for them. You don't have to refresh the page. And it also allows developers to not worry about uh, a a really heavy, uh, really heavy pages with like more than 300 posts, for example. And this is another example of uh, WordPress as an app platform, uh, Nomad Base. This is a product that uh, we built internally at Human Made that tracks uh, Nomad Base is like a digital nomad tool that helps you track your trips and connect uh, with other digital nomads around you. Nomadbase uses APIs to gather geodata from Facebook, Swarm, Twitter, Instagram, and TripIt. Uh, we actually don't use it, like WordPress is not used uh, on the back end or the front end. It's only used as a database. And um, the, the data is stored in custom tables uh, in the database, and data is then sent over the WordPress REST API to our React front end and displayed in the browser using uh, Madbox, which is a really, um, a really cool platform. <sighs> Those were like some of the opportunities and kind of examples, but there are a lot of challenges that come uh, with the REST API, especially for non-developers. And here are uh, a couple of uh, them. The first thing is uh, you have to remember this only counts if you were if you're talking about the uh, WordPress project built with the REST API. <laughs> Don't freak out. <laughs> Loss of core functionality is uh, one of the things. Um, with the decoupling of the front end and the back end, a lot of people that are non-developers don't actually uh, make the difference between what is front end and what is back end with WordPress, specifically when uh, you know you have back end features on the front end, like uh, the ability to f access the back end from the front end, for example. So uh, you know there's some there are some things that get lost when uh, you're using the REST API and you have to specifically rebuild them to have them. Um, like the whole kind of appearance settings, uh, menus, background, the editor, a customizer, um, you know, which in a sense disempowers the so-called website builders. You know, all these people that are not developers but building projects with WordPress, uh, how many of you are that person? Is everybody else a developer? <laughs> what are you guys doing in this session? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to start being a lot less friendly. <laughs> uh, cool. So, um, all right. This, th this next bit is going to be a lesson for all of you. That's cool. Not just for uh, my boss, Joe. Um, all right. So, um, the disempowering of WordPress ad builders may lead to a lot of confusion. Uh, and uh, what you may not uh, understand or realize is that those WordPress site builders can also be your clients. So these are people that you should consider when building projects with the REST API. And uh, here's the story. <laughs> I'm going to tell you a story. It's curious for two reasons. First, it illustrates what happens when you don't prepare your non-developer team for a REST API project. And second, and more important, you know, <laughs> because I haven't found a better way to give feedback uh, to the team that built the feeling restful.com site. <laughs> uh, you know, and this is the perfect opportunity to give them feedback, you know, in front of thousands of people publicly, uh, kind of, you know, in an event that's also a, a live streamed, actually, right? Oh, that's, that, that's right. Okay, yeah, this is the right way to give feedback if you didn't know, it's like, especially if the developers are also like people that are in kind of your boss. Um, yeah, so back to, <laughs> back to um, site builders. Uh, I am a word, like a WordPress uh, site builder and so is my colleague Siobhan, who I really like and uh, we, both of us, kind of work in the events department at Human Made, which uh, is in charge of throwing these REST API events that um, I told you about a while back. Uh, so when, when we started, when we decided to, do, to throw the first one, uh, we had to figure out how to put up the website. 
right? And we had to do it fast because we wanted to announce the event, but ha, surprise, you know, human made is super busy and there was no developer, ava developer available to build the website. So Siobhan and I got to talking after like waiting a week, two weeks for somebody to kind of, you know, free to, uh, to throw a simple, you know, five pages website for us. We were like, okay, so we should use a theme and build it ourselves, right? I mean, in a way, we can use everything that the WordPress ecosystem has to offer. And we did, with core and a premium theme dedicated to events and like our own kind of uh, limited abilities, we created a site in two days. All the content was in there, everything was great, except it wasn't really that great. And people started like, mocking us on Twitter that, you know, we are throwing a REST API events with like a site built with a WordPress theme and they were speaking about like JAX and rendering and stuff that I didn't really understand, but it bugged the developers. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it bugged them enough that they found two days to rebuild the site. <laughs> and, um, uh, and yeah, um, you know, this was, this was how the, the, the website uh, looked before. And then in two days, Joe, who is also a part of the REST API team, uh, and uh, Noel, who is uh, our kind of uh, design person, like a partner in uh, Human Made, in two days, they had like an alternative that was built with uh, the REST API and like a React powered theme. Uh, all the content was like thrown in there and everything was great. And you know, Joe built this little widget on the bottom showing like the REST API request and they open sourced it and, and you know, everything was so, so great. And, and for me, that was amazing, you know? Uh, you know, it was totally justified. Um, that would mean people on Twitter would shut up and I can go back to market my event. <laughs> and then Joe posted, because we're super transparent, Joe posted like uh, about uh, the theme and how he built it and why he built it and, and also what is missing from like a standard kind of WordPress uh, install and uh, you know what is not there <laughs> and how it would impact like the publishing processes and the content creating processes and that is how Siobhan and I found out what we will be missing from the new website I mean just a few setbacks you know we couldn't edit menus um, we couldn't use previews on posts uh, we couldn't impact the front end in any way. We couldn't change uh, a simple link. We couldn't even manipulate images if they weren't in the modular page builder that uh, was used on the background. We, using, we couldn't upload our sponsor logos because the template for that wasn't built yet. And um, you know, something as simple as adding a link to the page became a problem and uh, yeah, I, I mean, for years, I had been able to figure something out with WordPress, you know? Something, always, you know, I'd upload a plugin and like change this here or hide something there or like edit the code a little or like edit the CSS a little and, and you know, things would, I could do something. Not this time, my hands were tight and for the first time since 2007, <laughs> I was in the sorry, miserable state where any changes on my website required a developer. <laughs> Siobhan, you know, I mean, I was, you, it's hard to be mad at people that are so busy, um, you know, so I was, I was like that most of the time. Siobhan was a little bit more blunt. <laughs> So in a way, in a WordPress development company where we were the 3% of non-developers, uh, we had become like involuntary victims of the miscommunication of, you know, what that cool new theme would not be able to do, would be taken away from us. So yeah, back to those like WordPress site builders. Uh, just the biggest takeaway from the story is your clients might come to you wanting a REST API project, not knowing what that would be taken away from them. So make sure that 
all the people on your team, your project managers, your developers, your clients are aware of what functionality should be in there, specifications are more important than ever in this case. Um, yeah, so after this funny story, let's get back to the boring lists. So the necessity for a structured portable data is one of the other challenges. Uh, if you want to send your data, like your content, to multiple front ends, it has to be clear of, uh, of um, uh, CSS and tags and HTML and uh, all the stuff that you know we are used to using on the back end to kind of format and create layouts and format pages. So this is one of the, the other challenges that uh, this is going to have to uh, that's going to have to be dealt with. Um, and uh, progressive enhancement is another one. And do you remember how I told you uh, that I thought that when we uh, launched that cool new React theme, we would get Twitter off our back? Uh, yeah. So when we launched it, it turned out that when you disable JavaScript, the, turn, the page turns black on the new website. So Twitter did not shut up. <laughs> um, and um, it's not that uh, a REST API powered website cannot work without JavaScript. It's that there have to be um, specific, uh, and there has to be a specific effort put into making it work with, uh, without JavaScript. So you, this is something that you have to figure out and uh, know about. And then there's the knowledge deficit. In an ecosystem where like most developers are PHP developers and so many people are self-taught, um, you know, learning JavaScript and learning all these cool new technologies can be um, a little bit of a challenge. So this is something that the WordPress ecosystem doesn't have right now and is going to have to acquire to be able to uh, produce really, really good uh, projects with the WordPress REST API. So what will change? What will change? Let's just sum up. WordPress will be a part of a larger stack. WordPress stopped being a web development tool used in isolation. It will become one module that is available in a web development toolkit. Imagine all these web dev development agencies that are not working with WordPress. They could start using it just for its back end and use all kinds of cool front end technologies to build with it. And um, you will need a developer to build a REST API website, true. WordPress developers will become, maybe will become backend specialists. We are uh, specializing in just WordPress and we've been hired to do only backend and it's been super cool, uh, really nice to work into those really uh, big projects where we're just one part of the work. And uh, this is maybe a path for a lot of uh, the other WordPress companies. WordPress will be adopted outside of PHP communities. Maybe they will stop hating on us so much. Who knows? Maybe they will start appreciating WordPress for the great things that it has. So uh, let's hope for that. And then um, there will be so many new uh, role-based admin interfaces. Like this is uh, Happy Tables, which is a, re a restaurant website builder. And on the back end, it only has what a website owner, um, the restaurant website owner needs to build their website. So all the clutter, all that, you know, WordPress is good for everything, but like where is everything on the back end? It's going to disappear. Uh, and you can create, um, easily create a more customi customized back end experience. And then the enhancement of the inbuilt functionality, the opportunities that you have to, in, to like just extend the back end. They're more advanced and more performant uh, when uh, using the REST API. And they're more than what can be achieved with PHP. At least that's what's promised. And actually, the good thing is nothing has to change unless you want it to. You don't have to use the REST API if you want to build, you, if you want to build like a very, very small four-page website. If that makes you happy and it's fast enough, and if it makes your client happy, you can keep doing that. What will not change is themes and team shops will continue to function as before. There will be business for absolutely everyone. And uh, WordPress will still be used for blogging because it's great for writing content. And small sites and do-it-yourself sites. And backwards compatibility will never suffer because of this. And ultimately WordPress will, WordPress's mission will remain the same to democratize publishing. 
So nothing really has to change, even though the REST API is a game changer because it opens new exciting opportunities. So I guess there's only one question left. Is the REST API getting merged in core? It is? Okay, let's rephrase. It is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come on, people, get excited. It's the end of the day, but there's beer after. Yeah. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So 4.4 um, uh, got the infrastructure merged, and then uh, in a few days, 4.7 will uh, include the endpoints for posts uh, and comments and users' meta and settings. And before you start asking me what this is, you probably won't because you're all developers, but still, I want to give you a few resources on the REST API. This is an amazing uh, white paper that my colleagues wrote. Uh, it's called Talking to 25% of the Web because it was written in the beginning of the year and who knew that it would grow in 2% in a year. Um, it's, it has a, a lot of the examples that I already gave in it and is a really good read for, uh, for you to send to clients that are interested in, being, in building REST API projects. Um, and this is where the documentation on the REST API is. Uh, the team has been really good in keeping documentation, so uh, that's really, really great. And in January, we threw this conference called the Arrest London, and there are amazing talks from it published on the web on poststatus.com slash resources. So uh, take a look. At how they have like a lot of examples on how Wired uh, uses the REST API and New York Times uses the REST API, and a, lot, a, a really nice introduction from the REST API team, and a lot of great examples. Yeah, Callum took uh, the feeling restful site and like completely dumped it in another front end. It was really humorous to watch on stage, <laughs> like just the content of your website with completely different design just in five and a half minutes. Um, yeah, and we're also organizing another conference, if you want to learn more, uh, in Boston, 2017, uh, in March. It's going to have people uh, using the REST API in production, so if you need ideas or want to meet likewise, uh, like-minded developers building awesome stuff for the REST API, I'd like to uh, see you all there. Thank you. And uh, the, the amazing burnt out Wapu was designed by uh, Scott Evans in the UK. Thank you, Scott. Um, I realized I didn't give credit, credits. So do we, have, do we have time for questions? Yeah? Um, okay, we have time for questions. I'm gonna direct all the developer questions to like, where Jorben, there he is, and like, Joe, where are you? <laughs> so you can ask uh, REST API questions. I have people to answer them. I know how to delegate. <laughs> <laughs> and if you don't, you can, yeah? Question? Yeah? yeah, yeah. Go no, just shout it out, I'll read it. Okay. Of course, yeah. There, you can have like modules powered by the REST API. You can still have like a theme on the a theme on the front end, and just several, um, you know, several of your kind of plugins being, um, you know, relying on the data coming from somewhere else. Um, it's it's pretty easy to uh, just build a module within your system, like a plugin that is powered by the REST API, not not the whole front end. Yeah. Yeah. So I've been looking at the documentation on the REST API. Wait, oh, at, okay, sorry. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Uh, so I've been looking at the documentation on the REST API, and what confuses me is that because of the fact that it's getting merged into core, um, is it the same documentation that would still be valid after the merge, or do we have to read read new documentation that because is, of the merge? Yeah, that is a really good question. So the question, yeah, you did you hear it? Where's Joe? <laughs> Where is he? Is the same? Okay, there you go. Migrating it to the main site, the main 
they are migrating it to the to yeah to the main side. Oh, Adam, yeah. Oh, I didn't see you there. This thing is really bright. <laughs> okay. Um, so uh, thank you for the talk. Sure. Um, I know you were kind of baffled by the fact that there was a lot of developers here. Um, the reason I came was because I want to explain it to non-developers, and I wanted to know how. <laughs> um, okay. And one thing I noticed about the REST API is I know why it's called the REST API. And I know why REST is like an important term, but I'm wondering why um, we haven't, as a community, come up with a more friendly name, because we've generally not used technical terms to describe things in WordPress. Um, right. I think it's the broader community that's, it's, it's not at fault, but it's like a API is like a broader term. I mean, API is just as foreign to me as REST, <laughs> to be honest, you know. And then we talk about the Twitter API and the Facebook API and like all these APIs. At some point, uh, your non-developers, especially your project managers, are going to have to learn these terms and know why, why things are called the way they are. They just need to be able to explain the technology to clients. The term doesn't really, I mean, it signifies something. As, as, as long as you're able to give an example that kind of explains to clients what this thing does and why it's important and why you know it should be this and not the other technology, that's, that's kind of enough, I think. Okay, thanks. Yeah, sure. Hi. Hey. Um, so as someone who experienced the shortcomings of uh, working with a custom front end. I'm, dram I'm like over dramatizing, you know. <laughs> you <realize that. laughs> um, do, you, do you feel that there is a gap uh, that, uh, where um, there's value for solutions that will work uh, on the front end, but will still have the flexibility that you have in working with Word WordPress so that you can still do all the stuff that you do in WordPress and all of that gets carried over without a developer or to a React or a, a JavaScript front end. I am looking forward to the first uh, React powered themes that go on the market that are customizable like the other ones that we are using. <laughs> I don't know if this is maybe something that you, you meant, but yeah, I, th I'm, is, yeah. I think that we're, we're going to be seeing some of them. I know that uh, the, um, the plugin directory actually is open to um, accepting those already. It's just nobody is really submitting them. But uh, yeah, it's, um, I think it's, it's going to be the next interesting market to, uh, to take a look at, like React Power Teams and the markets. All right, thank you. Sure. There was a question up front here. Did the guy like, yeah? Oh, was it you? OK. <laughs> cool. All right, guys. I don't want to stand between, between you and beer or like any kind of refreshments. So thank you so much.